Okay, we've talked about thinning of paints, so let's start to address technique. But before we actually start to work on a model, let's talk about a couple of things. First of all, I'd like to show a pre-shade technique, which helps to create more character in your finished product. This technique can be done with just about any double action airbrush on the market. So the important thing to ask yourself is configuring the airbrush itself. So let's take a look at that. In case in point here with the Grex Tritium, I have the crown cap on. The crown cap will promote less dispersion of the paint to perform a fine line capability and yet still protect the needle. Now with some airbrushes, they may not have a crown. You can simply leave the nozzle off of the airbrush, but just be aware that the needle is exposed. Secondly, ask yourself a question about physiology. And what I mean by that is, play to your strengths. How do things work best for you in terms of movement of the airbrush on the vertical plane or on the horizontal plane? And there's a very simple test to determine what might be your strengths. And that's by simply taking a 3x5 card, ruled, and simply painting over the lines. By doing this, you will find either on the vertical plane or on the horizontal plane, which you're more comfortable with. For me, I find I tend to be a little bit more wiggly on the horizontal plane, so I prefer to work on the vertical. So how does that apply to the model? Well, play to your strengths. When you orientate the model, you want to orientate it such that you're working where you're comfortable. When you need to do lines perpendicular, simply orientate the model in such a manner that it's playing to your strengths and you will find in the long run you will have a much better looking product at the end. So let's go ahead and continue to panel line our model. The lines do not have to be perfect. They can have a little wiggle. When you get into really small detail, simply paint the whole detail. If you can get super, super fine, you can uh, be more careful with that detail, but simply getting a little coverage on it is just fine. Notice that when I approach the model, I am at a very high angle. In fact, I'm almost at 90 degrees to the surface of the aircraft itself, and I'm very close to the surface in order to promote the fine line capability. Okay, so now we've completed the first stage of our painting process of this model, the pre-shading. A couple of things I want to point out. First of all, I've addressed all the panel lines on the model itself. Secondly, with some of the smaller details, I've gone ahead and just simply shot the entire detail. And when we go to the next step of applying the military color that the model will eventually be, it'll all work out nicely and be consistent with the rest of the effect. Something else I'd also like to point out, you may have noticed I'm shooting with a gloss black paint, and there's a very specific reason for that. The gloss paint itself, when it is applied to the model, is smooth when it's dry, like the plastic surface of the model itself. If we refer to this diagram, you'll notice that we are looking at two cutaways of the surface of the model, incorporating a panel line. On the upper diagram, we've used gloss black paint, which will lay smooth. When we apply the base color that the model eventually will be, which will be a military flat, that'll provide a somewhat rough texture by comparison. With the lower diagram, you'll see that if we were to have used flat black paint, it will have compounded the rough texture over the surface of the model on either side of the panel line, thus creating an inappropriate effect with the finished product. In our next video, we'll actually address the base color of the model itself.